sun is up. What? What is going on here? Being a little bit proactive with my day schedule. Because I've got some work to do tonight. So, I had to make the executive decision. Finish my work first, or lift first. And usually, well, I don't know, it kind of depends. Right, if I've got a bunch of schoolwork or projects and studying, I don't know. Maybe you try to start it during the day. But if I've got the choice, I, I want to get my lift done. I want to finish my uh, finish what I want to do first, and then be able to spend the rest of the night doing, you know, all my other bullshit. But plan for chest should be a pretty quick lift, honestly. I mean, just one muscle group. Once I get warmed up, first working set to last working set, I mean, that might only be 30 minutes. I'm getting a little tired of incline barbell, though. That's uh, that's my only gripe with this <clears throat> with this gym. Is uh, they got rid of their two Smith machines, which they used to have. And these two Smith machines were fucking sick. Because they weren't like the... Uh, they're fine, but you know the Smith machines at like a Planet Fitness, or the Life Fitness Smith machines, kind of a thicker bar. You know, those are cool. Nothing wrong with them. I mean, I used them before. I don't have too much of a problem. But these were some old school Smiths, where like it was just a barbell that was on rails. You know, so if you dropped it, the uh, I think it still had counterweights, just a little bit, but they weren't that helpful. So it really felt like you were just pressing a barbell. It just happened to be locked onto the path of a Smith machine. That, that is one of my favorite movements. Just because, you know, I can kind of hit it in two ways. Like when I see a Smith machine, it kind of calls me to do two kinds of sets. I could go, you know, well, both sets I'm gonna go heavy, but I can go slow and controlled and really get a good squeeze throughout the whole motion of the movement. And the fact that it's a Smith machine, you know, you can hit failure on a bench much quicker than you can on a Smith. You know, because you don't have to worry about your stabilizers getting fried out or anything like that. If you've done a good amount of sets on Smith and on incline barbell, then you know you can kind of muscle through a couple extra reps on the Smith machine, or really any kind of machine, compared to what you can do on uh, free weights. So, you know, if they had a Smith here, I think I think my first set would maybe be heavy, slow, controlled, really get a good squeeze, a lot of time under tension. Uh, I I don't really think about that kind of thing when I'm actually training, but you know, it's definitely legit. By the time I finish a slow set of like eight reps with, I don't know, 300 whatever on the Smith, I'm feeling it. But I can also do it in a complete opposite way where I just really throw the weight around as quick as I can. So, you know, if I take a weight which I could get maybe eight reps to failure with slowly, then, you know, maybe the next set I could get 15 reps, including some partials, of course, and really just kind of throw it around quick. So... You know, just kind of two different styles, which, in either case, always gives me a really good amount of fatigue. And, you know, it always puts me on track to getting a good chest pump once I, uh, well, not even once I start doing cable flies or pec deck. I mean, by the time I'm done with my pressing, I'm still, like, eesh, probably more than halfway to fully pumped. And then moving on to more concentration, isolation movements, that just puts the finishing touches on them. So, midday, I don't think it's going to be too busy in here, which that would be good for me. I think prime time rush hour, at least at most college rec centers, and really I guess any gyms in general, weekdays is going to be like probably 5 to, probably 5 to 7. That's, uh, if you go to the gym at 5 to 7-ish, and then you say... Why is it so busy in here? What What's going on? Come on. You should know this. 
You should know this already. So if you got to take a little bit of extra time waiting for a bench, then shit, man, maybe you should have came in earlier. So I, uh, I'll see how I feel after I do my little cable warm up. You know, before any kind of chest pressing or whatnot, I always sit on the cable and get my triceps warm, rear delts, rotator cuff, do a little bit of rowing action just to get my back warmed up too. Since every time you press, you know. Sure, you're pressing off the bench, but you're also pressing off your back, so you're going to want to be warm. Chest is the movement which I take the most time and diligence to warm up. Because not even just like based on what other people say, I've learned from experience that if I don't have a proper warm-up for my whole upper body torso pressing action with my shoulders and rotator cuffs and everything else, then I am much more prone to tweakage. So I, uh, I definitely take care to spend my time well, making sure I kind of prep everything that's gonna come into play before I you know, try to load on hundreds upon hundreds of pounds straight onto my fucking you know, shoulder joint. The last thing you wanna do is do three reps of you know, X amount of weight and then here, Ooh, not ideal. That's uh, that's negative lifting ASMR. But time is of the essence. Let's just get in there and get started. All right. I don't have that much time for chit chat, so let me just recruit this guy right here for a quick little spot and throw this around. Just uh, just help on like the last one. Thanks. A little overestimation of strength. Let's uh let's drop the three plates. Oh my goodness. Okay. I think two sets of that will be good. Let's move on to something else. I'm not sure. I think machine press will feel pretty good. I went over and tried the pec deck, but I don't feel fatigued enough for the stack to be enough weight. So I think maybe a drop set of sorts here. That'll be perfect. One more.
All right. Let's do some kind of flying motion now. You know, I never gave a shit about dirty mirrors in the gym until I started fucking recording through them. I'll fucking catch myself taking, like, getting the paper towel or something to wipe it off. But, no. So I'm waiting for, like, some kind of cable to do some peck flies. But I can't wait that long. So instead of just sitting around waiting, probably lose my fucking pump, I'll do a set or two of... I don't know who originated these. Honestly, I don't even remember where I saw them. But... You know, you take a moderately heavy dumbbell. I mean, I'm gonna grab the 50s and I kind of hold them right in front of me like this. Like my biceps are in front of my lats and my hands are right on top of my quads. And one arm at a time, I use just my pecs to pull the dumbbell across my body. This looks pretty cool if you want just a stringer because your fucking pec fibers just jump out at you like a fucking, like a Freddy Fazbear game ending spook but I'll say this it's not necessarily an awesome movement because you don't get any work in the stretched position usually I like this as like a, a pre-exhaustion like I would love to do this set really like honestly I don't do any movements for chest that burn as much as this so I would love to do like you know 10 reps and burn out and then go do some cable flies behind me. But just a set of these, it'll still feel pretty good. It is a little funky, I mean, definitely an accessory movement, but worth trying for sure. So let's, uh, let's throw it around. And when I do those, I like to keep my chin down. Like you'll notice I'm not sitting here like this. I got my chin down like this because I want to feel my upper chest flex with the bottom of my fucking chin. Not that I have to touch it to know it's doing something, but I don't know, it just kind of does it for me. Let's, uh, I'm going to do another scan. And if no cable fly is open, I'll just come back to another one of these. By a higher power, beyond my control, I've gained access to two cables at once. So these cable flies, well, as basic as this first set will be, I'm going to make sure I get as hard as any other. Come on. There we go. the drop set done all right same weight as the last one for portion a of the set but once i reach a sufficient level of fatigue doing the normal flies i'm going to drop the weight just a little probably from the 40 to the 30 and do some bent over ones i don't mind a little bit of swinging and a little bit of body language on these first flies just to get some extra fatigue but when i do them bent over I really don't want to be swinging at all. I want to be a lot more controlled and just let flex in my pecs do all the work. And then something about bending over, I just get a way nose. Let's just hit it. 
I mean, let me pick a better song first, Jesus. Yeah. Okay. okay. Let's go check the pump before I'm even later to class than I already am. Oh, there we go. Exposure down to a nice and comfortably freaky level. And what was that? Let's uh let's retrace our steps here. Two sets of bench, two sets of machine press. One set of kind of crossbody dumbbell pullover slash flies. Maybe not pullover. Pullover is not the right word, but whatever. And then two sets of flies. So seven total sets. That felt about right. So let's uh, let me adjust this little thing so I can see what I'm doing. But I foresee like a five dollar psychic, except with much more accuracy. I can foresee a gnarly pump. So let's, uh, let's see if my prediction is correct. Uh, I feel like an insider trader when I say this kind of shit. Because just by feeling, I already know that it's fucking freaky as all hell. Woo! Fucking love it. All right, let's, uh, let's run through some mandatories here. Oh, yeah, you see all this? I gotta get rid of that. I gotta get some more freaking blubber on my body. But not for fat's own sake, but just so I'm fucking actually eating more food. Ooh. Oh my goodness. Okay, let's get one more most muscular classic style. All right, let's get out of here. I'm fucking late to econ. I would go so far as to call that a lift with satisfactory intensity. Now, my actual, like, numerical performance, I'm, I'll be real with you, a little bit below par for me right now. Um, not making excuses, but I do think potential sickness might be kind of fucking with me but even though i may have felt a little bit weak <laughs> oh my goodness even though i may have felt a little bit weaker than peak strength those sets were still about as hard as i could push it those machine chest press sets were also pretty good i uh, i should have asked the guy i was working in with to give me some help with some assisted reps that would have been that would have been nice. One thing, uh, yeah, when I, fuck, I swear it's these new pec flies. They're just not awesome, you know? Like every time, so this gym used to have an old school pec fly. We're talking 90s. You know, the handle wasn't like a plastic rubberized, you know, ergonomic piece of whatever. It was just a fucking piece of steel. With some paint on it, of course. Whole thing nice and rugged. Stack was, well, the stack wasn't like insanely heavy, but you could throw a plate on the side of it and, you know, really do a hard set of like 15 to legit failure. Oh, dude. And you know what they do with it? Eh. We, I, uh, I swear, they must have just thought, eh, it's kind of dirty. It's old. 
Eh, it's all grungy. Let's replace it with a brand spanking new one. You know, let's spend X amount of money on a brand spanking new one. Three times as, uh, or, what's the, one third the quality. And honestly, sometimes even less than one third of the enjoyment of the reps. Uh, I may just be speaking out of, uh, I mean, I'm definitely speaking out of opinion. I'm sure some people love the new one and didn't like the old one. So maybe this isn't necessarily an accurate uh, like display of information and it's just a personal rant or something I'm a little bit upset about. But either way, for me, not awesome. Because what'll happen is with some of these newer pec decks, they kind of pinch my shoulder a little bit. It's just kind of a weird feeling. Like I try to, I went to warm up on a pec deck after those, uh, yeah, after those sets of incline barbell, and I mean honestly, like something about doing the reps, it kind of just put a weird pressure on like my collarbone. I just, I don't know, man. It's not, at least for my build specifically, not ergonomic. But cables, uh, oh yeah, that was the whole point of me bringing this up. So instead of doing the machine pec deck flies, cable flies always feel pretty comfortable for me. So if you got a pec deck that you don't really love, bust some cable flies out. Cannot beat the basics. Cable flies are pretty freaking cool. And they kind of have, like, like pec, pec decks are cool. It's kind of constant tension just because of the way the uh, like machine and the pulley and the lever arm works like if you were to put a scale on your palm in between your hand and the handle when you're down here if you lift the weight it'll be the same amount of force as up here for the most part you know some of these new fancier uh, I don't know what they're called they have kind of like adjustable strength curves for the machine but for the most part with a pec deck the force is pretty linear throughout the motion, but I don't know if you can really understand where I'm coming from with this, but when you do cable flies with, uh, with the cables right out to your left and right side and you're standing right in the middle, it's uh, something about that strength curve. I love it because, I mean, the tension on my pecs, it's kind of, I don't know, when I get to the top of the rep, I'm pulling the handles directly towards each other like this so my shoulders don't can't come into play you know nothing it's all chest and then it gets lighter progressively as I get over here because more and more of the force isn't being you know transferred to my pecs themselves it's just you know in my shoulder blade and kind of through like my skeletal system so in my mind I'm kind of envisioning what I'm talking about so if, if you can't really follow it I don't blame you but this is another kind of point that I I don't know how many times I've said this, but definitely worth thinking about. You know, I think the general populace, like just the, uh, well, I'll say this, the lack of knowledge about your anatomy, I think that is kind of fucking prevalent in, uh, at least in the layman lifter demographic. You know, like, it's like that meme where it's like, okay, is your friend a real lifter or not? which one of these movements hits chest and it's like four exercises like fucking push downs or lat pull downs or like bench press or whatever else and like you know the amount of people that I think get that wrong and just don't really know I uh it's a little bit disappointing and I'm not saying that's everybody but I think having a little bit of a firm grasp on what muscles come into play not even during specific exercises, but just in specific movements of your body. Like being able to kind of visualize that in your mind is going to help you squeeze your sets and like just kind of orientate yourself and, you know, adjust the seat and position of certain machines in a way that the movements really feel comfortable for you. Like I've heard dudes talk about how like they can, they hate a seated hamstring curl because it just, I don't know, it just never feels right and whatever. And I ask them, like, you know, how, how often do you try to adjust the seat? You know, and they're like, well, I don't know, I just kind of sit down and do it. It's just, and, like, I, I look at the settings that they use. This is not a rare, this is not an often circumstance, but I have, I've talked to at least one dude like this. 
and I saw the settings he was using, like how he put the seat up and everything else. And I'm like, I, of course I didn't say this, it wouldn't be mean, but I was like, dude, what the fuck? You know, <laughs> like with stuff like that, you want to, or with a leg extension, right? The pad pivots around a little point, which you can see, right? So you should try to adjust the seat so that your knee, you know, where your actual leg bends and pivots lines up with that. You know, so the machine actually kind of flows with your body. Because a lot of fucking machines, if you don't have the settings right, or maybe you're a little bit of a taller dude or a little bit of a shorter dude, and, you know, it's sometimes it's a little funky, not only is it not going to be a super good or, like, optimal set, because, you know, you're kind of fighting against the machine instead of working with it, but, I mean, it's just, you could potentially freaking hurt yourself, you know? I could totally mess myself up if I tried to do like a certain kind of seated machine curl and I had the height set totally wrong and it would just like wrench my forearm in like a freaking brutal kind of way you know like that's kind of stuff you gotta watch out for but basic premise that I'm trying to get at if you're doing a lap pull down don't just think about pulling the bar to your chin try to think about pulling your lats tighter into your spine or like you know internally kind of pivoting your shoulder blade and stuff like that and I don't want you to try to think about that if you're a total beginner but as you lift and as you progressively fucking you know get better and better at understanding and feeling how shit contracts and you know whatever else I mean when I, at this point now it's, I mean every day I end up re-watching my workouts because I gotta go back and edit the videos and while I'm watching the set whether or not this is a good thing or a bad thing, like, if I'm doing pull-downs, I'll kind of, like, fucking instinctively, like, f tighten my lats behind me. Or as I'm, uh... Oh, man, yeah, it's... I was just kind of daydreaming in class. We were watching some presentations, and it didn't necessarily require 100% attention. So, like, a little bit of a delinquent, I was kind of dozing off. And while I was half asleep, I was kind of dreaming that I was doing leg extensions, you know? Like... When you get to the point that when you dream, you literally dream about the lift that you're going to do the next day, and you're like, in your mind, you almost like feel yourself doing the sets and stuff like that. I mean, I won't say that's a good sign, but I will say that's probably correlated with a lot of training experience and training obsession, which in the context of long-term progress, those are some good traits to freaking have. I uh, I believe that firmly. So plan now is get to this last class. Only a little bit late. I'm gonna you know go home, park, and zip over on the electric bike, which I know is kind of redundant because I always hype up doing cardio, but I don't think so. You know, it's like <laughs> we all know how annoying it is when somebody's like, "Oh, you want to help move this, that, and the other?" I mean, get your workout in for the day. No. Come on, right? I want to do my cardio in a dedicated time and a dedicated uh, session, and the rest of the day, dude, I want to fucking chill, right? It's a, it's not a rare circumstance for you to see me take the elevator up one flight of steps. So, again, whether or not that's a good thing or a bad thing, whatever, that's how I roll. But that's all I got. Solid chest day. I can tell I'm probably going to feel it a little bit in the morning, potentially. Not that that's, you know, necessarily a sign that it was a good lift or a bad lift, but just kind of based on the kind of fatigue and burn I'm feeling now, I might feel just a little bit of tenderness tomorrow. So, cardio in the morning, followed by a back workout in the evening, which I'm pretty hyped up about. I'm going to make sure I slam some... Uh, I don't know what I want to slam. I'm not sure what gym I'm going to go to tomorrow either, so that'll kind of determine what the lift looks like. You know, if I go hit up Metro Fitness, then definitely going to get some hammer strength pull downs and rows and, uh, you know, stuff like that. But if I just go to the Y, then it's going to be a lot of single arm cable pull downs and maybe some machine rows and I might add some dumbbell rows in too. I feel like I've been, uh, I feel like I've been skipping those for a little bit too long. I don't love them, 
but I do love training variability. So yeah, don't get uh, don't let your workouts get too stale. But that's uh, that's enough of my little ramble. Go eat your food. Go do your cardio. Go lift your weights. Holy! I folded all my laundry. Can you believe it? Oh my god! I was oh, I put it all out in my bed so I so I would have to fold it before I could go to sleep. Put on a. Uh, the first part of Berserk Redux. Got about halfway through it before I was done. I got a good night's rest last night. So, uh, Alright, now, now I'm really just rambling. I'll see you next time, man.